Leonardo, you have to admit, you were wrong. I mean, you were dead wrong. You told us the market was going to go down and it's going to keep going down. And look what we get today. 500 point rise. Man, did you forget to look at the charts yesterday or something? What's going on with you, Leonardo? Guys, 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 not so fast, okay? I mean, let me show you a few charts first because it is exactly the reason why I said the market was going to drop because the charts were pointing to a drop. And I know some of you are not exactly enthusiastic about my ridiculous predictions as stated in some of the comments, but as ridiculous as they are, they are about to become 100% reality. Here's what I mean. Does this chart right here, does this look to you like a bull market? And just be honest, I mean, does this look like a bull market to you? Look at this nice uptrend, right? Right here. Look at this. Look at this. Wow, that's a beautiful uptrend. With the exception that this is not the stock market, but the VIX. Guys, <laughs> got you there, huh? You thought we we're talking about the bull market here, huh? And this is the VIX, guys. The VIX has an inverse relationship with the market. So when the market's supposed to go lower, the VIX is supposed to be going higher. And it VIX is doing exactly what it hasn't done in years. It is actually creating an uptrend. And also notably, as pointed out in the last few videos, it is trading above this level of 20. And it held, while the markets were going higher by 500 points, it held this nice level of 23 today solidly. Now let me ask you another question. Because, hey, I know there's some bulls out there still. Okay, I know I don't have everybody convinced yet that the market is about to crash. So here's what we get. October 25th, today, market is up 500 points. Market, I mean, Dow Jones was up 500 points. S&P was up like crazy. Uh, NASDAQ was up. So all the major uh, market indices here in the United States, they were up like crazy. I came, just look at this. Look. And, and I know what you were thinking. Leonardo was wrong. He was dead wrong. And I sure hope that in today's video, he's going to admit that he's dead wrong. Look at this. Amazon went up $124. I mean, and sure, look, he told us, Leonardo told us, don't buy the dip. Remember, guys, I kept saying, hey, our strategy right now is to short every bounce. Short every bounce and stick to your positions. Okay, so here's what happened. You may be looking right here and you're like, man, Amazon, I sure wish I bought the dip. Or maybe you were so tempted to buy the dip because of the fast rise into the close. Look at this nice uptrend on Amazon while the markets were going high. So did you buy the dip? Because this is what happened after market. And the question to you is, does this look like a bull market? Amazon drops after hours from 1794 bucks all the way to 1615 And that's at the time of recording this video. I'm not sure by the time you may be looking at Amazon tomorrow, it may be trading in the 1500s. Now, about a week ago, we said that Amazon target price in our view is going to be 1500 bucks. Now, I know a lot of you were highly skeptical because at the time, Amazon was trading at 1850 and between 1800 and 1850 bucks. And I can understand why some of you would say, well, Leonardo, these are ridiculous, uh, you know, predictions of yours. I mean, they make no sense whatsoever. So maybe at this point you will reconsider and maybe you'll realize that some of these predictions, they're not that ridiculous. What is ridiculous is the fact that we have not had a correction in the market in a long, long time. And it's way overdue. And that's exactly what's taking place. OK, so Amazon down close to 200 bucks after hours the last time I checked. Does this look like a bull market to you? Because that's the question of the day. Because if you believed that it was a great idea to buy the dip, you're still in the mentality that this is the bull market. And the whole idea of this channel is to bring some light so you could save money, so you can put some trades together that will make you a ton of money. After all, that's why we trade the market, right? So we can increase our capital. So let's take another look at something else right here, guys. Buy the dip, right? Here's Google. Here's Google today. Market is up 500 points. Okay, nice uptrend on Google. Nice and green. You're probably looking at your screen and you're like, oh my goodness. I mean, everything looks so good. Looks like everybody's buying. Everybody's buying. And so naturally, when you guys were probably looking at this, just be honest. 
type it in the comments. Did you want to buy this dip today? Did you? I mean, it, there's nothing wrong with that. That's just being human, okay? Well, in a bear market, you want to do exactly the opposite of that. You want to short the bounce. And if you will understand that this is indeed a bear market, this is not a dip that you want to buy, that the market environment has changed, I promise you, the sooner you will come to that realization, the more money you will make. And there will be a time to buy the dip. It's just this is not the time to buy the dip. Because if you did buy the dip on Google, oh boy. Oh no, you didn't. You did? Oh God. I know, it was so tempting. Google after hours drops to the extent of 110 bucks. Now Google wasn't as bad as Amazon. It did bounce. Last time I checked, it was only down about 60, 70 bucks. But the point is, you got two top stocks in the tax sector. You got two top, mostly like stocks among the FANG stocks, okay, that all of a sudden a drop into the extent of $100, $200 after hours. Now you have to agree, something like this have not happened in a while. And if you don't take this as a sign that the market environment is changing, and if you don't take this as a sign that it's time to switch up your strategy to something else, while everybody else may still be talking on TV about buying the dips, if you don't adjust your strategy now, if you think this Google trade was painful when you bought the calls this morning, you're into a big surprise because it's not going to stop here. The situation is about to get way, way worse. But remember, you don't want to be buying puts when things drop. And actually, we recorded a couple of videos on this channel going a little bit into the trade in psychology when you're actually trying to short the market, when you're actually trying to buy the puts. And if you'd like to learn more, okay, one of the best things you can do is study the chart course because it goes into in-depth explanation of what are some of the divergences, what are the top three chart patterns to short the stocks and how to do it. So if you're new to shorting, if you're new to buying put options, if you're new to the strategy of shorting the bounces, then you're definitely in the right place because you can learn a lot of stuff and make yourself a better trader right here on our channel and by taking advantage of some of our services. So not once did we actually alert our VIP traders today to buy calls. And our goal is once we identify a strategy, instead of changing our mind, going back and forth, back and forth, the, the best thing you can do is just stick to your strategy. Okay, and our strategy as we identified last week going into this week was shorting the bounces. So stay true to your strategy and you will generate better results instead of changing your mind back and forth all the time. Now I know what you're thinking. If I only had the money to sign up for the VIP trader alert, oh man, I would be doing so much better. I mean, if I only had the, the money, man, that's a lot of money is what you're thinking. And some of your comments clearly state that, oh man, you know, it's a lot of money. I, I you just, where am I supposed to get that kind of money? Well, I'm going to give you two secrets, okay? Number one secret is it's not sometimes the question of how much something costs. So if you're thinking, well, but the VIP alerts and the VIP subscriptions, it just costs so much, okay? Here's, here's what I want you to think about, okay? Oftentimes in life, it's a better question to ask is not how much does something cost, but how much is it worth? And I'll give you a quick example. Let's say you're buying a house, right? And and you know you're only looking to spend five hundred thousand. Well, your realtor takes you to a million dollar house and shows you a million dollar house, and you're like, "Oh no, hey, that's a million dollars. That's a little too much for me," you know. Um, and then you settle for a house that's four hundred thousand, and you buy a four hundred thousand dollar house. Well, the next morning you find out that the house you were looking at was a million dollars. It's actually worth fifteen million bucks, and the house you actually settled for, you bought for four hundred thousand. Well, damn, I don't know how the bank got you financed on that thing. I was only worth 300. So what's a better deal? Well, clearly knowing that the million dollar house was worth 50 million, you could have flipped it in a matter of days and made a killing on it. If you have the proper information, what decision would you have made? Clearly, most of the people would go with a million dollar house knowing that it's worth 15 times more than that, right? So, well, it's the same thing with the VIP alerts, with the VIP service, right? It's not about, you know, it's not about how much does it cost. It's about how much do you get 
how much value do you get from it? And if it costs you 2,500 bucks a month, but you know, you're making 10 grand the first day, I mean, that's a pretty great value. Now, some of our subscribers have made substantially more than that just in the last few days. We had subscribers making over 100K, but look, that's not actually the main point here. The main point is this. I don't even want you to sign up for the alerts. I don't. You're going to be like, what are you talking about? You got me confused, Leonardo. What, what do you mean you don't want me to sign up for the alerts? Well, the whole purpose of this channel, guys, is this. Like, you're supposed to learn and hopefully because I, I'm, I'm thinking that you want to learn because you're actually watching this video and have been following some of our videos uh, generally speaking it's because you're trying to learn some new information it's because you're trying to become a better trader so if to me if that is your number one primary goal then I would rather have you learn how to find trades on your own if you absolutely set on becoming a VIP subscriber, that's fine and we welcome you. But, you know, we only got like just a handful of spots left for that. So just keep that in mind. But I would rather have you learn how to do it. And so you actually don't have to spend what appears to many people a big hefty monthly fee until they realize what they actually get in an exchange. But I would rather have you learn how to do it on your own. And, and I'll give you a good example. Actually... I want to send a shout out to Max. Max actually uh, recently got a chart course from us and I talked to Max uh, uh, yesterday and I was very excited for Max because he was able to identify this trade right here on his own. Look at this. He bought some puts on ALGN and ALGN actually dropped over 100 bucks in the last 24 hours. Now he only had a couple of puts okay but just utilizing a couple of puts he was able to make twenty thousand bucks on this very drop now the cool thing is this that I did not help Max with this trade Max took our chart course he diligently studied it he applied the information to the charts and that was his trading idea so my question to you is this would you rather just be a, a part of the alert service in the VIP program where we, you know, inform you of some of our trades? Or would you rather learn how to do this on your own? I think a more valuable skill would be to clearly discover how to do that. And so you don't have to spend this big monthly investment on joining the VIP. You can start with the chart course. And if you really study it and apply it, you will be able to catch trades just like Max did okay but what we don't want you to do we don't want you to just go through the course right and and just oh well you know some nice information here the idea is to apply the course information to the real market environment and so if you're looking at acquiring the course from us the number one thing you need to understand if you are the best trader in the world if you apply the information to the wrong stocks you're not going to get as good of a result. So what you really need is a winning watch list or what we call the winning watch list. And I'll explain what I mean. Not all stocks are great products for trading options. What you need is a list of stocks that we define by understanding what their DTR, daily trading ranges or daily traveling range. And certain stocks that meet certain characteristics are way greater for producing results trading options just keep it in mind I'm not gonna go a lot more into that because I wanna make a point about where the market is going next real quick okay before I do that history repeats itself it's very important that you guys understand this I know a lot of you got excited that were trying to prove me wrong that I was wrong in my ridiculous estimates and so on I think a very important thing to understand here is the reason why we make 90% of our decisions based off the charts. It's because charts, if we know what to look for, tell us what's coming next. If we can focus on six cases of divergences, some chart patterns, and combine it with some other observations that you can learn from our chart course, this is what we're able to identify. On a day like today, right, can you see this? I've got these purple dots right here, guys. Can you see the candle that was formed today? You see this white candle with a black border? And you got a tail sticking out right here. 
actually looks what we call a bearish reversal type candle failed rocket launch okay it was trying to go it got sold off a little bit it actually hit a high of 27.25 finished about 27.05 right here so it didn't finish at the highest levels of the day now pay attention very similar candle was exactly when the markets were going higher about a week ago when we had a big substantial move actually did extend of about I think 500 points as well okay now notice this okay so we're dropping right here one two three four five six seven eight days lower and then we get one big move higher for about 500 points so in a bear market look how well you would have done if you would have actually shorted this bounce right here so you've got multiple days lower everything looks red all of a sudden you get a big day and to just refresh your mind a little bit do you remember the day where the markets have dropped like 800 points on the Dow and then they've dropped another you know uh, five, another 600 points well um, shortly after that we had that spike higher where the markets actually looked like they were turning around they were, they were rallying 500 points well that wasn't the time to buy the dip and if you've been following our videos we clearly pointed that out okay so if you use the strategy that we suggest right now and that's shorting the bounces so when the market bounced and you would have shorted it here you would have done really really well right because what happens same thing one two three one two three four five six roughly six days in a row the market goes lower so we get the bounce okay what do you do now I know most of the people that are accustomed to buying the dips they were doing clearly just that they were buying the dip now what I've showed you the market action reaction after hours we're no longer at 2705 actually we're way way below that we're currently trading last time I looked at the S&P futures we're, we're about 25 30 points below that which tells us there's a high probability okay not just making that observation but making the observation on how Amazon and Google are trading after hours there's no way when there is such a strong sentiment in the marketplace uh, that the market is going to reverse and go higher so the path of least resistance is lower and if you watch yesterday's video we have talked a lot about this gap that was created and so our thesis our uh, the entire theory strategy is based on the market going lower making this observation compared to the chart of Netflix so if you missed that video yesterday please go check it out because it does go and give you some insight about the importance of this gap in comparison to Netflix chart so bottom line is this if the market does not close this gap higher and it's going to continue lower utilizing Netflix example of identified the markets could be going lower for about two weeks or nine trading days so okay we've had one up day today and tomorrow we're gonna to have a big down day and I think Monday we're gonna have a substantial substantial day lower so call it the Monday crash we're gonna have a substantial move lower just as it looks like we just can't go lower anymore we're actually gonna go way way lower and tomorrow could be an absolute disaster okay what was the last time you've actually seen most of the fang stocks dropping simultaneously not by a little bit but by a significant amount and here's what's going on while you, you may be wondering well you know Amazon beat on the earnings Google beat on the earnings all these quarters are so good guys the reason FANG stocks have appreciated so much over the years is because of their sales not their earnings please understand one thing that Amazon has not made money in 30 years since the 90s right and so it's only in the last couple of years Amazon actually turned profit but in, it didn't stop the stock from climbing higher all this time right so why were the investors putting money in Amazon well it's because of the higher sales numbers it's because of the growth and that's why they call them the growth stocks well today we have found out that the growth is actually slowing as we indicated in some of our videos on this channel in the last couple of weeks we've actually been talking about deflation we've been talking about things slowing down the growth slowing down and so we we were basically saying that a lot of companies are not going to be able to uh, you know meet their earnings projections uh, their sales projections and so between the earnings and the sales the most important number when the companies report that are growth companies that are fang stocks 
is the growth number, which is the sales number. Okay, because the earnings could be adjusted, right? If the company is no longer growing, you can cut expenses. You know, you can make the bottom line look good uh, by doing a few small things. But what you cannot cheat on is you cannot cheat on your sales numbers. And so if the sales growth is slowing for the FANG stocks, for the technology stocks, and that's been the main reason why institutional investors have been buying them for so long, if their sales numbers and growth, if they're slowing, that means there is no really any more reasons to be buying these companies, at least not at this time. Valuations have to be adjusted significantly lower before institutional investors are going to consider all these great companies an attractive investment again. So just keep this in mind. Yes, Amazon is a great company. Google is a great company, but they're going to sell off like crazy tomorrow. And I'm sure some people are going to start buying, taking little dips and pieces, you know, and thinking that this is the time to buy. But trust me, this is not the time to buy these things yet. Again, we're looking, you know, we were looking, our projection on Google was $980. We announced that about a week ago in, on Amazon, it was $1,500. And so we still got a little bit of room to go before we get there. And maybe at this level, some people are going to actually start coming in and, and putting some money behind these things. Uh, but at the rate that they're selling off right now, I'm not even sure. Those price targets may need to be adjusted lower in order for some of the institutional investors to consider them great buys and great investments at this point. So what we're saying is, in this environment, when you have best stocks selling off, we're saying that there's no way the market is going to be able to close this gap. It actually had an opportunity, and it looked like it was actually breaking above this level of 27.25 which means the next stop would have been right here around 2750, 2768 level in order to be able to close the gap. Well, it couldn't, it didn't, it failed, and the path of least resistance again from here is lower. So the question is, how much lower? And I've been giving you the answer in the past few videos. It's 2323. 23. The answer is easy. 2323. 3. That's how low we think S&P 500 could drop over the course of the next two weeks. And the fact that I'll point this out, right? Actually, we had a chance of a reversal if the market would have initially sold off significantly lower and then institutional investors were going to come in and, and start scooping up stocks. Well, every time you get a bounce first in this type of environment, there's a high probability of a sale um, to follow through in the next few days. So what do we expect for tomorrow? We're expecting a huge sale tomorrow, huge sell-off tomorrow, huge sell-off Monday. And so in this type of environment, this is not the environment where you want to be buying the dip. So if you'd like to learn more on what to do, how to do it, which stocks to short, for all, just focus on shorting any bounce. Instead of buying the dip, a new strategy is basically short the rips. If you're trying to learn more how to trade options, how to trade stocks, how to understand charts, how to point these moves before they actually take place, how to trade weekly options. If you have any questions at all, okay, simply schedule a 20-minute coaching trading session with myself or a senior trader here and get all your questions answered. We're here to help in any way we can. If you're looking to learn more about charts, below this video there's a link where you sign up for the 20-minute coaching session that is 100% complimentary. Under that if you click there's actually more links and many people don't realize there's plenty more links below this video. One of them is for the Charts and Divergency course. If you've not taken it yet, I strongly encourage that you will because it will make a profound difference. Okay, going back to going back to an actual person that took the course, used the knowledge, applied it. The value of this is exponential because the main point here, when Max did it once, he can do it again because now he knows what to look for to be able to identify this type of trades. And so when you look at the chart course, maybe some of you are thinking, well, uh, it's, you know, it's, it costs too much. Well, what if somebody was to tell you that if you took the chart course, all of a sudden your probability of finding some trades like this was going to increase substantially? Would that be worth it? And that's the question only you can answer. But if whatever you're doing right now is not working out for you, then I encourage you to take action. Because I promise you, you will be able to learn something that will help you. So with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next video.